Hello, I'm Pastor Bill Curl. If you've lost a friend or loved one by death recently, you've discovered that grief is inevitable. It's certain it'll happen because of that loss. It's the uninvited guest that comes into your life. You wake up in the morning and you say, this is a wonderful day, and then suddenly you realize that your grief is still in residence with you. It's still there and it's still gnawing at you. And the dream that you thought you were having has become a nightmare instead. Motivational speaker Zig Ziglar says, grief is the price we pay for loving somebody. If we didn't love them, if we didn't care, then it wouldn't make any difference that we've lost them. But because we love and because we care, grief normally comes in. And we ask ourselves the question, am I normal? Is this normal for me? Am I crazy? Have I lost my mind? Well, rest assured, grief is a normal reaction to your situation. It's not only normal, but it's hard. Grief is intense, a struggle. Grief is something that requires a lot out of us. It saps us of energy, and it's all gone before we know it. Uh, someone said grief is not for sissies, it's hard work. It's not only normal and it's not only hard, but it's also confusing. We look for our keys and we can't find them, or we get our appointment book out and realize, oh no, I've, lo I've missed another appointment. Where did the time go? We only want to go to sleep and not wake up, but uh, then we discover we can't sleep at all because we're disturbed. It, our concentration is gone. We, we can't focus long on anything before we're thinking about something else or nothing, just in a cloud or a fog. Our whole world has turned itself upside down. I've got a puzzle here, a beautiful puzzle with, with a picture. Uh, this is kind of how you felt your life was for a while. Everything was together and everything was beautiful. But then something happened in your life. You lost somebody. And suddenly your whole life is turned upside down. And the pieces of your puzzle of life are scattered and you begin to try to put them back together one by one. And then you realize that there is a big missing piece in your life, the friend or loved one that you've lost. The little poem that we learned as children is so appropriate, I think. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. And we feel like there's nobody there who can put us back together again. And that missing piece is very, very painful. And suddenly we realize that we can't put ourselves back together, that even others can't help us totally get back together soon. But then we realize there's somebody who can, and his name is Jesus. The shortest verse in the Bible, found in John 11, says simply, Jesus wept. He wept because of the situation around him when his good friend Lazarus had died and his other good friends Mar Mary and Martha and others were grieving his loss. He wept because he understands how we are and who we are and how we feel. Isaiah long before Jesus came looked to the coming of the Messiah and said that Messiah is sent by God to comfort all who mourn. That includes you, includes you, that includes me when we mourn. But life for us will never be quite the same. There is a new normal, a different normal that we will have to achieve. But we realize that grief also is unique. Nobody else can tell us exactly how we are going to make this pilgrimage of grief. Your grief is unique. It has no standard that you have to live up to. It has no time or space that you have to obey and fit into. Each person grieves at a different pace, at a different intensity, and yet each of us can look to the scriptures and say, I can make it through here. I can do this. In fact, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So normal for you may not be the same as normal for me as we walk through this journey of grief. I'm getting a little thirsty talking here. Uh, I think I'll stop and have a Coke if I don't mind. Now, what's wrong with this? What's wrong with this scene? 
Well, you say there's pressure building up inside of here. You said if you open this quickly, it's going to explode all over the place. But there is a way to handle the pressure. It will build up inside of you unless you discover some ways to let it go. And so a little at a time, a little bit at a time, you begin to find ways to let that pressure reduce itself. And then it becomes usable again. The pressure that we allow to build up inside of us makes us do some really crazy things sometimes to make us feel like we've almost lost control. Have you ever just exploded on somebody or all of a sudden had no idea where that came from? And you say, why in the world did I say that? Why in the world did I do that? And the answer is because we've let too much pressure build up inside of us of grief. And all of a sudden it just explodes all over anybody that happens to be in our way at the time. No, there are ways, though, to release that pressure. Uh, one thing is to talk with others who've had the pilgrimage of grief as well. All of us, sooner or later, will make this pilgrimage. And there are people who've gone ahead of you who can be some help and give you some insights into how to handle it. Talk not only to others, talk to yourself. Look in the mirror. And once you get over the shock of what you see, ask yourself a simple question. Can I walk through this grief now? Sometimes you'll say, I don't think so. But sometimes you'll be able to tell yourself, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And then talk to God. Prayer is something always that is uh, overlooked in the midst of our grief. We feel like God has gone so far away, like the Job situation in, in the Old Testament. We feel like God has removed himself from us. And yet, in that moment, we cry to God and we discover he is listening. We can yell at God sometimes and know that he's listening. He can take it. He understands us. If anybody understands what it's like to lose somebody, God, who gave his only begotten son for us, understands what it means to have that kind of loss. The psalmist said, I cry to God when my heart is overwhelmed. And I'd suggest that we do the same. In fact, not only cry to God in prayer, but just cry. Crying has a cleansing effect. Laugh. It, it's amazing how tears and laughter can mix themselves together and equip us for the journey of grief all the more. Write down in a journal what you're feeling, what's happening in your life. It'll help. It's almost like we're driving the car of our life down the highway of life. And as we're driving, the road begins to get more narrow. The road gets bumpy. The lights go down. It's raining hard and we can't see through the fog and we're struggling and and we're fighting it with all we have. And then suddenly we realize there's somebody riding with us who's made this journey many times, who knows the road, who can handle the bumps, who has all strength, who is light itself. And we stop and say, whoa, here, Jesus, you take the wheel, you drive the car of my life, and let's make the journey together. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Make the journey and know that God is going to go with you. God bless you.